next week. So this is where LSU is really looking to bear down and try to get some points on the road. This is the fourth to last game in the regular season. It's hard to believe we're at this point, but every single point is going to matter to try to get yourself a good spot in the in the SEC postseason bracket in Pensacola. You've got RPI in mind. Where will you end up in the NCAA tournament? Both these teams have aspirations to get back to that field. This is an important matchup here on a beautiful Friday evening. We'll get you the starting 11 for both sides as kickoff just about to commence. LSU led by their head coach, Sean Hudson, into Knoxville. This is her first trip to Knoxville as we kick things off here at Regal Stadium. Happy to have you with us. Sure to be a good one here in SEC play. Humbert tried to chase one down for the Tigers. Now possessed from Taylor Huff from Tennessee. Huff pressing it forward. Jada Thomas is there. Centers it at the feet of McKenzie George. George back to Thomas. Thomas gives an effort. It takes a ricochet. Still right at the top of the 18. Forces the Tigers' hand to clear it away. An aggressive start there from Tennessee trying to press the tempo of foul. Let LSU catch their breath. Sean Hudson in her third season will show a 3-4-3 formation here on the road in Knoxville. And Coach Hudson certainly has been known to tinker her lineups this season. A little bit of a different look today. Molly Swift, though, familiar face in between the sticks. Lindsey Jennings, Shannon Cook, and Maya Gord will be the back three of defense for the Tigers. Jaden Humbird, Ida Herman's daughter, Jordan Johnson and Wasala. Wasala Diwara Sawale also in the midfield spot for LSU. And then the forwards will be Rami Noel, Alicia Garcia, and Taylor Dobles. Here's Nelson for Tennessee. Huff at midfield, playing it forward for Nelson on the run. Defense from Noel, able to win it back for LSU. Cat sees it go past the touchline, will be a throw for the Tigers. Starting 11 for Tennessee, they're led by Joe Curtin, his first season as the head coach of this Tennessee side. Longtime member of this program. This is his 16th year, an assistant under Brian Pinsky for many years. Has now taken center stage of this program. And he elects to go with the 3-5-2 per usual. That back three from Tennessee, five in the midfield and two up top has been the staple for Tennessee and Joe Kurt formations this year. Some nifty maneuvering from Rain. Really good pressure from Ehrman's daughter from LSU. Trying to win it at LSU's attacking third. Fusco. Nelson. Right wing now takes it central. Nelson maneuvers. Nelson, an effort from distance, takes a deflection. Fusco repossessing here. One-on-one -on -one with Lindsey Jennings. Will be a foul on the Tigers. We'll set up a good set-piece situation here for Tennessee. In the midfield for the Volunteers, as you see the foul on Jennings. Abby Burdett will be in the holding midfield spot. Maria Nelson, Claudia DiPasupel out on the right left wings. Jordan Fusco and Taylor Huff, your attacking midfielders. And the two forwards up top will be Jada Thomas and Mackenzie George. Claire Rain to take. Gives way for Deepa Supel now into the 18. Lawson Rennie gets ahead on it, but it skews out for a goal kick. Back three from Tennessee is anchored by Lawson Rennie, who just got the head on the set piece feed from Deepa Supel. She'll be joined at the hip. Tara Katz to her right and Claire Rain to her left. That's the back three 
for Joe Curtin, this Tennessee defense. George tangled up for a moment with Noel. Wins some space now down the right side. Tries to flick it central. Takes a deflection. It will be a corner kick for Tennessee. First chance from the corner spot for either team here tonight. Tennessee, one of the best in the nation at getting chances from corner set pieces. They lead the SEC about seven and a half averaged per game, and it keeps rising. It will be Deepa Supel. Plays it short to George. Deepa Supel right back to her. Services it through. Burdett gets a piece of it. But it will collect itself right at the top of the netting. Nifty first quarter there from Tennessee. George took it short. Played it back to Deepa Supel. Allowed Tennessee to breathe a little bit in the 18. A good service. It found Burdett. Just couldn't catch it on a line. A goal kick came in hot to the Tigers, and it is given away back to Tennessee. Nelson right side. Here's George. Thomas now. Fusco. Good movement from Tennessee. Deepa Supel now launches one through. George in the 18. Touch just a bit too hard, and LSU will fire it away. Tennessee certainly moving the ball well. Just a little past five minutes into this one. Thomas a touch looking for Fusco. George now. Played out the right wing. Maria Nelson one-on-one -on -one with Noel. Moved towards that goal line, and it's another corner kick for Tennessee. Some good opportunities, good possession early for this home team. First quarter was well executed. Didn't result in a shot on frame, but certainly an opportunity. It will be Claudia Deepa Supel again. Four assists for her. Makes her fifth straight start of the year. Looking for Burdett once again. That time LSU had things covered. Deepa Supel again. This time from a bit further out. And finally Garcia able to get it away from the 18. Possession has been in favor of Tennessee early. Working a couple of different ends. A really nice move from Fusco. Almost made it work down that touch line, but the ball just trickled over the line. Check out the trickery here. Almost. That LSU sideline, they had their hands high. They saw it go past that touch line. Could have been the start of a good run for Tennessee. Ball back to Lindsey Romig. Keeper for Tennessee. One with a lot of experience. The senior going head-to-head -head on the other end for LSU. Another experienced keeper and Molly Swift. A pair of seniors. There's Swift there just having to punch it away. Much different results in both of these teams last games out. Mentioned LSU had to meet a really good Alabama team in Baton Rouge, a 5-0 defeat to what is now the second-ranked team in the nation in Alabama. A team that could score quick and early and often. Here's Huff. Give it away. Jennings now possesses for LSU. LSU. 
Burdett's feed goes past the touchline throw for LSU now. It was a 5-0 defeat for LSU against, at the time, fourth-ranked Alabama, but the Tigers certainly had some early chances. Shot on goal within the first 25 seconds. They had a goal called back for offsides early on as well from Diwara Sawale. A couple of chances that they just couldn't quite execute on, but they certainly got off to a good start. Sean Hudson liked the way that her team came out against Alabama, but second half said just couldn't really finish strong. I'm sure one of those goals will be to play a full 90 minutes here on the road. The Tennessee team, three straight shutouts in SEC play, but most of their life and most of their goal scoring have come in second halves. Huff on top of the arc. Claire Rain now moving forward. Rain tries to line one into the box. Deepa Supel now. Really nice move on Garcia. Lines one through off the head of Maria Nelson and wide. Another good look for Tennessee. Maybe a bit high for Nelson. Tennessee, they've gotten a few ricochets off a few heads, just haven't really been able to direct anything towards goal at this point, but a couple of really good looks. LSU trying to possess, get things on their end of their offensive third. Noel with a burst of speed down the left side. And Terry Katz was there. Tennessee will put a lot of numbers in attack. But Joe Kurt, in his first year, experimenting with that back three, says you have to be able to get back, and he feels like he has the speed athleticism from that back to be able to recover. Rain having to give chase, almost caught off guard as Dobliss in hot pursuit, it does win the ball. Dobla is trying to one-two pass it back to Diwara Sawale. And pass the touchline. Tigers possessing well on their attacking third of the field now. Garcia here off the throw. Flip it to some open space out to the left end of this 18. It's Noel. Noel attempts an effort from just right outside that 18. Deflected before it could go towards Romig. Good run down that right side. Maya Gordon bought herself some real estate, but... Couldn't quite center things up for a teammate. Will be a goal kick for Lindsey Romig. Question really will be how can LSU respond to the 5 0 defeat at the hands of Alabama, an opponent that Tennessee also took a loss to, their only loss in SEC play, 4 2 here in Knoxville. A team at the moment. At Alabama, that's in the driver's seat for the SEC regular season championship. But again, as mentioned, for LSU, this is their toughest stretch of the season to date. On the road against 16th-ranked Tennessee, and then you're back on the road next week against top-10 Arkansas side. Ball played forward. Lindsey Romig slides over to her left to scoop it up. And you see there, Romig, very well-deserved SEC Defensive Player of the Week, named by the league earlier this week. Two clean sheets against Missouri and Georgia. Didn't allow a single goal, had seven saves and 30-plus shot attempts. And really, just to credit, not just to Romig, but what this Tennessee defense has been able to do recently in this portion of their SEC schedule 
Their first three shutouts in SEC play, they're all consecutively here. Mentioned second time loss in or second time Lindsey Robick has won the award. Here comes Jordan Fusco streaking up the middle. And it took a key deflection from Lindsey Jennings, and Molly Swift is there. Tennessee, the last time they were out was a 2-0 win in Athens over Georgia. Again, their third straight shutout. A Tennessee team that continues to be really, really good on the road. Just one loss on the road. They came to North Carolina to start the season. An SEC play, Tennessee, unblemished on the road. Some key wins away from Knoxville. That one in Georgia isn't easy. Deepa Supel trying to make it turn central. A bit of contact right outside the box. It's going to be a foul. It's on Jaden Humbird, and this is an enticing opportunity now for Tennessee. They'll have a set piece in a great spot. You never know how games can go in terms of chippiness, in terms of fouls. LSU is right there at the top of the league in, in terms of fouls per game. Second in the conference. They average about 11 a game. You can see already four. Tennessee, they're at the bottom. They don't usually foul a whole lot. Not as aggressive. Feed in. Looking for Burdett. Off of her head and wide right. Another big opportunity for Burdett there. It just misses off her head. Claudia Deepa Supa, what a service. Already three assists in SEC play. There's Burdett, and she just missed. Best look Tennessee has had all evening so far. A little over 15 minutes into this first 45. Deepa Supa wins it back in Tennessee's attacking third. Here comes Jordan Fusco now in the bit of space. A slide from Sawale wins the ball back. What a defensive effort from LSU, and now they want to counter. Herman's daughter the other way. Makes a move. Gives an effort on goal. Back to the feet of Garcia. Garcia feeds it through. Dobles. An effort, but Tara Katz in the way. Good counter from LSU, but Tennessee well defended. And now Tennessee, a chance to counter the other way. Taylor Huff from midfield all the way forward. Here's Thomas now at her feet. Turns and fires into the trees, but a good look. Action packed. Both sides. Goal line to goal line there, both LSU and Tennessee making deep runs into the 18. And Thomas certainly had some breathing room. And for the SEC's leading goal scorer, Jada Thomas, 12 on the year. She has scored now in her last four SEC matches. You cannot leave her alone in the 18. Not often she'll miss if given space. But certainly fun up-tempo movements from both of these teams. Approaching the midway point of this first 45. LSU against Alabama had those early chances. Haven't quite found them here on the road to Knoxville just yet. But certainly a good run. Here's George. Presses it forward. What a feed into Taylor Huff who got a lot on that shot. And it's over the crossbar. Somehow Huff got to that ball and almost curled it in. It was a great feed from McKenzie George. And that's a connection that you cannot leave unmarked as well. Tennessee, they have so many options on the attacking end. It can be overwhelming for a defense to keep up with at times. 
LSU on the year. They have allowed 23 goals, second to last in the SEC, but it is a potent LSU offense that is third in the conference in total goals scored per game. So on paper, these are two of the top scoring offenses in the conference. Could be a match in, in terms of who can shut down who here. A lot of different attacking options that both these teams possess. Doblis giving chase for LSU. Tigers trying to get numbers back. They're three up front. Herman's daughter was there. A lot of really good intensity in this first 45. Noel gives it away. Thomas. To Huff. Back out to Katz. Katz will launch one long, easy pickup for Molly Swift. Swift making her 13th start for LSU this season in goal. The senior allowed 21 goals this season, 43 saves. Herman's daughter. Right at midfield, LSU. Johnson bounces it back out to Herman's daughter. Herman's daughter working on Burdett. Humbird. Flipping it back for Gordon. A little bit too hot past the touchline. The Pasupal had Fusco. Couldn't quite get her before. Lindsey Jennings sprung forward to clear it away. The fifth-year defender from Conroe, Texas, Jennings. Center back able to punch one away. This is an LSU team that has a mixed bag of, of different players on this roster. Sean Hudson's in her third year. To her, it might feel like her second year. That first year was obviously that split COVID season. Didn't win a game in SEC play that year. The Tigers did. Really got in a groove in, in her second season. LSU got as high as the fifth-ranked team in the nation. Started out red hot in that 2021 slate. They won their first eight matches. Kind of came back down to earth a bit. Five-match losing streak in SEC play, but obviously effort was still good enough to get them to the SEC postseason tournament, make it back to the NCAA tournament for what was LSU's seventh time in program history as a yellow card Administered to the Tigers. Get a good look there of the slide. That's going to be Taylor Dobliz, who is marked with the yellow. Again, the Tigers a physical team. Good defense from Abby Burdett on Sawale. Foul on Tennessee, Claire Rain. It will be a free kick now for LSU. Mentioned just this LSU team. A mix of everything. Sean Hudson still bringing in recruiting classes, getting acclimated with this program, has already done some incredible things. And it feels like LSU continues to be more and more of a player in this conference each year with Sean Hudson. Another goal for them is to get back to Pensacola, get back to the SEC postseason tournament. Currently sitting fifth in the standings, but... It's a team that has a lot of freshmen contributing, but also a lot of fifth-year graduate seniors. So you've got a good mix of youth, a good mix of experience on this LSU team as the Tigers pick up another foul.
Raina DiPasupo will stand at the spot. Set piece chance for Tennessee. They'll bunch up in the 18. It will be DiPasupo to take. Lofting for Burdett, but Molly Swift taking initiative. Goes up and snatches it away. Deepa Supal has been busy with these services. You can see why she's been so successful in SEC play. She's been on target with a lot of these feeds. Creating opportunities that time just missing Abby Burdett. Nearing 25 minutes played here in the first 45 in Knoxville. It is Tennessee and LSU on this beautiful Friday night in Knoxville. Under the lights, in the thick of SEC play, every point matters for both of these teams as we go down the stretch of this final month of, of regular season action. Nelson right side for Tennessee. Looking for Thomas. Noel right to Taylor Huff. Gave it away right in the 18. Feedback in from Nelson. Fusco makes contact. LSU forces to clear things. Diwara Sawale is down. Sawale went to contest Jordan Fusco on that ball. That was loose at the top of the 18. And She's a bit slow to get up. Again, we mentioned the stakes at this point. Tennessee, they've won their last four SEC matches. They've won in total nine of their last ten, and they've picked up shutouts in their last three. They're going for a fourth here tonight in front of the home fans. LSU on the other end. They're looking for their first win against a ranked opponent this season. They just haven't gotten over that hump. Three matches, they've got two losses and a tie. Had a chance against Alabama last week on Sunday. Now a chance here in Knoxville. They'll get Arkansas next week as well. So plenty of chances for LSU to get that ranked win. RPI is so important at this part of the year. You start talking about resumes. Where do you fit into the NCAA tournament seeding discussion? Both these teams are pretty even in terms of RPI. Tennessee 29, LSU 35. A chance to improve your stock. LSU obviously a road-ranked win would help out their case. Tennessee, they continue to rise in RPI. They got their first-ranked win against Ole Miss on the road. Will be a corner kick for Tennessee. A couple of substitutions. Hannah Zalusky is in. For Claudia Deepasupal. Angelina Thorson is in for LSU. And Molly Baker as well in for the Tigers. So a pair of forward substitutions for Sean Hudson. Be Alicia Garcia and Taylor Dobles that step aside for the Tigers. About 18 minutes remaining here in the first 45. 90 minutes to be played in Knoxville. If things remain even at the end of 90, it will be a tie. No overtime in the new format for the NCAA this season. Sage Glover also in for LSU, freshman forward. LSU going to some different feet up front for the back half of this first half. There's Wale. 
Good to see she was able to continue. Good movement down that right side from Thorson. Trying to make a play back on it. Claire Rain tripped up on the effort. The first few minutes for Angelina Thorson. Already picks up a foul. Card does stay put. Right in front of the Tennessee sideline as well. Joe Kurt speaking his case, thinking maybe it should be a card. Fifth foul for LSU this evening. Tennessee just won. Here's Rennie trying to find Mackenzie George down that left side. Runs past the touchline. LSU wants to go quickly. Right back to Tennessee. Back three, flip ins. Claire Rain, a lot of speed. Look at Claire Rain. Finds Zalusky perfectly. Zalusky feed in. Thomas, a little bit behind her. Ball bounces up high. Tennessee, a lot of pressure right here on the 18. LSU repossessing. So it's so dangerous for Tennessee. Even that back line can run forward. Takes a clearance here for LSU. It'll be a deep throw for Tennessee. Four shots for Tennessee in this match. LSU none up to this point. Nothing on frame for Tennessee, though, of those four shots. Here's George. Right, Gord winning that battle. Now Thorson trying to work it the other way. Burdett. And another throw for Tennessee. A pair of teams that are top three in this conference and goals per game. Yet to find too many chances. Huff with some space. Huff lasers one right towards Swift. It peaked out for a moment, but it is wrapped up from the senior keeper. Really good look from Taylor Huff. Doesn't really matter where she is on the field outside the 18. Doesn't matter. You give her some space. She will threaten. Swift is there at the end. First shot on goal for Tennessee this evening. Less than 15 remain here in the first 45. But Tennessee is certainly owning a bulk share of this possession. Remember, in these last three games that Tennessee have shut out fellow SEC opponents it's taken late game goals. Tennessee in their 2 0 win over Georgia. It took goals in the 77th minute and the 78th minute. So it certainly felt a lot closer than the box score indicates. Here's Rain. Zalusky. Fighting with Thorson. Rain now feeding Huff. Tries to back heel flip it forward. Maybe thinking Mackenzie George or Jada Thomas could spring through past the back line. Clever idea, but Molly Swift has it.
First time in a while that both these teams have met. Got to go all the way back to 2018. Hard to believe it's been four years since these teams met in the regular season or met in general. Last time, technically, in 2018, it did come in the SEC tournament. It was a 1-1 draw. LSU was able to advance on penalties and then eventually go on to win that SEC tournament. Back in 2018, as Tigers fans, I'm sure, can remember. Obviously, both these teams have been through a lot since then. Two new head coaches in that time. Both teams have won an SEC tournament. Tennessee, in that 2018 year, they got eliminated from the SEC tournament by LSU, but did go to the Elite Eight. Of course, LSU in the tournament last year, as well as Tennessee. A lot of time since that last meeting. And it feels overdue, but finally meeting again. Here's Herman's daughter. Katz is there. Herman's daughter centers. Looking for the head of Sage Glover. Takes a deflection. It will be a goal kick for Tennessee and Lindsey Romig. Other pair of subs for Tennessee. Freshman Cameron Simmons is on for Mackenzie George. And Sidney Hennessy on for Maria Nelson. The Glover there trying to redirect things. Tennessee good defense. A lot of reasons why they've had three straight shutouts. Obviously a lot due in part. Lindsey Romig feeling more comfortable in, in goal. But that back three add in Abby Burdett, the holding midfield spot. They've worked so hard in some of these really tight SEC matches. It is a group effort when defending in this sport. It's a back three formation that most of these starters are unfamiliar with. They didn't play in this formation last year. Tennessee, of course, returning 10 starters from that SEC tournament championship season a year ago. Have to get used to that back three. A different feel for some. Lindsey Romig missed the first two matches of the season. So she was still trying to get comfortable with high caliber opponents as well. Certainly Tennessee has taken their lumps this season. Lost to Alabama though since then. Joe Kurt says this team has really reestablished themselves. Cameron Simmons, her first touch, positive. It nets a foul. Whistle out. Free kick for Tennessee. Play it quickly. Here's Zalusky. Good ball forward for Cameron Simmons. Shannon Cook is there. Good defense from LSU. Well possessed from Maya Gordon. Really good win in her own defensive third. But Taylor Huff wanting it back at midfield. Another foul called on LSU. That's already their seventh here in the first 45. Mentioned an LSU team that is very physical. Second in the conference in fouls per game, a little bit above 11 per match. So far they're on pace for a bit more than their average. Here's Rennie trying to push it forward. Simmons up top, and Swift is there. No score here in this first half between Tennessee and LSU. Chances have been at a minimum. Just one shot on goal for either side. It came from Tennessee, who have certainly had more opportunities than this LSU team so far early. Tigers have yet to put a shot off. Tennessee, remember, three straight shutouts starting to show some defensive prowess 
here in the middle portion of this season. Another substitution for Joe Kurt. Jada Thomas will get a breather. Giselle Washington on for Tennessee. Really good atmosphere under the lights in Knoxville, East Tennessee. Beautiful fall evening turning into night. Washington, her first touch. Hennessy. Deflection. LSU repossesses. Glover the other way. Sage Glover trying to find Molly Baker. A little bit too much on the pass. Huff trying to win the ball back on her own attacking third, and that's going to be a foul on Huff, Tennessee's second foul of the evening. It was in the high 60s at kickoff. It's now about 60 degrees here in Knoxville. Clear weather. Not a lot of wind. About as perfect of weather as you can ask for for this Friday night match. Will be a throw for Tennessee. LSU wearing all whites. Molly Swift, the keeper, in the neon green. Tennessee's keeper, Lindsey Romig, in the dark uniforms, whereas Lady Vols wearing their summit blue unis this evening. Brand new jersey that a couple of different Lady Vol programs have incorporated this season in conjunction with the 50th anniversary of Title IX. Bring in these new blue jerseys. They're named Summit Blue after legendary head coach Pat Summit. Fusco flips it around. Washington down the right side. Noel got a touch on it, but it runs past that goal line. Goal kick, LSU. For those unaware, Lady Volunteer Blue has, has always been a little bit of a, a piece of, of Lady Vol, either jerseys or logo. You can see Tennessee Lady Volunteer logo has the blue lettering. Goes back to when women athletic director Joan Cronin was looking for jerseys for the basketball team. Didn't quite have orange available at the time, so she had to go with this color blue. And since then, it's always remained a part of Lady Volunteer history. The blue jerseys look nice. Soccer team has debuted them. Volleyball this fall. Fusco goes down hard at the touchline. She wants to see a card showed. It was Diwara Sawale on the contact. No card, but it is a foul. Again, LSU has been very aggressive. Eight fouls here in the first 45. Really good Tennessee team on attack. Sometimes you have to be aggressive against teams with a lot of attacking pieces. Simmons gets a touch on it. Lays out nicely and almost tucked away. It may have even caught a piece of the crossbar. Molly Swift, what a save. Look how things can quickly develop for Tennessee. Almost tucked in. Molly Swift just got a glove on it. It will be a quarter kick for Tennessee. Fusco up high. A little ricochet off of Taylor Huff. It might have even hit her shoulder. It's over past the crossbar. That was the third corner for Tennessee in this match. What a good look. It was Hannah Zalusky who was right central with the chance. And 
It took a great effort from Molly Swift. Ball placed out forward. Simmons giving chase. Jennings, really good defensive effort. Jennings again launches it back to midfield. Really good job by the fifth-year defender. Minute 15 remaining in this first 45 of action. Tennessee has had some really good opportunities. Nothing to show for as of late. LSU haven't registered a single shot in this match. To see where things stack up. 6-0 Tennessee in the shot department. Certainly adjustments to be made by both ends. Tennessee, they've been very successful offensively in the second half of matches. This Tennessee defense has proved to be very difficult to score on. Three straight shutouts. They pitch another shutout here in this first 45. Time's going to wind down. Romig, a final effort to midfield. Not a lot of time for either side to make any sort of pursuit on goal. That will be the end of the first half here in Knoxville. No score between 16th ranked Tennessee and LSU. Fair share of opportunities for this home team. Back in action here in Knoxville, Regal Soccer Stadium. 45 minutes in the books. No score to show for between Tennessee and LSU as we kick things off for the second half of action. 45 minutes to go and what will be 90 minutes for this SEC battle under the lights at East Tennessee. It's been a beautiful evening all night long. As both these teams have fought hard, the first 45, no score to show for. Nil-nil between the 16th ranked team and the country wearing the blue uniforms. Tonight, the Summit Blue uniforms and the LSU Tigers, the road team looking for their first ranked win of the season in the white uniforms. Andy Brock with you here with the rest of our SEC Network Plus crew bringing you the action as we move along here in the second half. Tennessee, six shots, one of them on goal to close that first half. LSU, no shots in that first 45. Both teams able to make adjustments in the break. They got their first look at one another for the first time. These two teams have matched up since 2018. It's been that long, four years. Both these teams have won an SEC tournament, and they've got different head coaches in that time span, so a completely different feel in a series that Tennessee has won 14 of 22 total matches. Offside is Claudia DePasupel. Will be an LSU throw. It was Tennessee who was dominating most of the possession. Obviously, you saw the shot statistics. Certainly more opportunities for Tennessee. They had possession most of the way. LSU, a couple of good counters the other way. But again, no shot. Nothing towards frame. No corner kicks. LSU certainly going to have to work to try to earn some opportunities. Tennessee again mentioned that they have three straight shutouts here at SEC play. They haven't allowed a goal since they went on the road in Lexington late September. So this whole month of October, they've been unblemished. However, in those last three, it, it certainly it seems like Tennessee has fair sharely dominated those three opponents, but a couple instances, it's really had to go down to the wire. Tennessee in their win against Georgia on Sunday, it was 2-0.
They got goals in the 77th and 78th minute. So Tennessee, they've certainly waited until the second half to score these goals in their last three matches in SEC play. All five of their goals have come in this second 45. Sean Hudson in the 4-0 defeat on Sunday. LSU took to Alabama, liked the way her team played in the first half, but said the second half not so much, maybe lacked a little bit. Right now it is certainly anyone's ball game. LSU going to need a sharp second half to walk away with a ranked road win, something that certainly could boost your RPI at this point in the season. These teams pretty close in terms of where they stand in the NCAA RPI, Tennessee at 29, LSU at 35. It's time to start talking postseason play already. Nelson with a touch towards Jada Thomas. Here's Herman's daughter. It's Molly Swift. Molly Swift, senior keeper for LSU, made a really good save. As the minutes were ticking down to that first half, Hannah Zaluski had a really good look. It took a great effort from Molly Swift to keep things even at the break. Here's Taylor Huff. Bit of space down this right side. Works it back central with her left foot. Goes for the curler. And it ricochets off a Tiger. Good find out to Deepa Supel. Working on Thorson. Deepa Supel goes down. Might have been on her own cause. Goal kick for LSU. These teams haven't faced since 2018, but in the two matches they did play one another in 2018, really close. Both ways, Tennessee won the regular season matchup in 2018 a double overtime. LSU won the SEC tournament matchup at Orange Beach in PKs. That's going to be the second yellow of the match for LSU. That's going to go to Molly Baker, who collides with Abby Burdett right in front of that Tennessee sideline again. A free kick here for Tennessee. LSU is certainly one of the more aggressive teams in the SEC. That's their second yellow. Tenth total foul already in this match. They average a little over 11 a game. Ready takes. Garcia for LSU gives it away. And Katz will feed it back to Lindsey Romig. It's been a relatively quiet night for the SEC Defensive Player of the Week. You wonder what goes through a keeper's head when you go through 45 minutes, no shots, no corner kicks. And now you have to expect to potentially make some big plays in this second half. Romega has certainly seen her fair chance of scenarios in a Tennessee uniform. Rain feeds it to McKenzie George. George so dangerous on the dribble. Another foul on LSU. Deepa Supel decides to play it quickly. Out for Huff. Lines one in towards Thomas. Thomas, open goal. Fires it towards Swift. Another deflection off a Tiger defender. And Swift finally has it wrapped in. What an open look for Jada Thomas. What a find from Taylor Huff. And normally Thomas, she touches it, has this much space in the middle. It's normally in the back of the net, but the Tigers did a really good job converging in on her. Anytime Thomas has it at her feet in the 18, it's all hands on deck. 12 goals scored from Thomas, that time couldn't finish.
Here's Baker for LSU. Claire Rain wins it back. It'll be a throw for the Tigers. Good pursuit from Fusco. It trickles out to Huff. Space down the right wing for Maria Nelson now. Nelson quickly throwing it in from the touchline. It's Katz at midfield. Thomas, touch. Well found to Maria Nelson. Nelson, really good move to find space. Services it through and cleared away. Such an important facet when playing against this Tennessee team. They have so many options. They have such a danger out front with Jada Thomas and Mackenzie George who can be very aggressive in front of goal, very well possessed at their feet whenever they do have possession. You have to wreak a little bit of havoc in that 18. You can't make it easy. Jada Thomas normally, when she has it there, just about as automatic as it could get. Here's Thorson down the right side. Trying to play it forward. It takes a clearance from Lawson Rennie. Another throw for LSU. Angelina Thorson did not get the start in this match. 13 total starts on the year. Seven assists. Sixth in this conference. Turned and fired. Baker. Nowhere close to goal, but should go down as the first shot for LSU in this match. George wins possession. Thomas. Swale. Battle at midfield. Here's Baker again. Trying to spring Garcia loose down that right side. Couldn't quite pick her out. A lot of action going on around the SEC here tonight. Friday night soccer in the SEC. Four different matches going on simultaneously. Two that started at the same time. Another two that were staggered that are in the first 15 minutes of action. And no one has scored around the SEC. Everything is nil-nil across the board. Missouri and Georgia facing off. Auburn and Texas A&M. 24th ranked South Carolina and Vanderbilt. All four games, complete draws at nil-nil. Keep an eye around the scoreboard across the conference. Again, as this is the fourth to last match for both of these teams. Here at this point in the season, Tennessee preseason picked to win the SEC. LSU picked 10th in the preseason poll. Nice ball forward. Landed right at the feet of Sage Glover. Gave a nice effort in on goal. Will be the first shot on goal for LSU. Lindsey Robick was there. LSU started to compile a few chances. Cats at midfield. Herman's daughter. Baker now with the head of steam. But Abby Burdett 
Stuffs her before she could get anywhere closer to the 18. LSU wins it back. Herman's daughter. Some good battles at about midfield right now. Opportunities at a minimum. Glover. Noel. Good ball for Baker. Here's Garcia now for LSU. Back to Baker. Nice one, two. Back to Garcia. Into the 18 are the Tigers. Garcia working on Burdett. Central, Sawale giving chase. Fusco slides in the 18, and it's cleared away. Gordon now for LSU. From distance, Gordon rips one just wide of that left post. Maya Gordon hasn't scored a goal yet this season but gave a really, really good effort from distance. Certainly had a lot of heat under it. And misses wide left. LSU starting to get some shot attempts now. Ball played back for Swift. Cameron Simmons back in the match for Tennessee. Giselle Washington also in for Tennessee. First pair of subs of this first or the second 45. Maria Nelson, a lot of room down the right side. Turns it back, looking for Simmons. Pinballing in the 18. Now Nelson. Touchline throw for Tennessee. About 15 minutes into the second half, Tennessee's now made their third substitution. Deepa Supel out. Hannah Zalusky is in. Simmons right towards the goal line. Lindsey Jennings able to win positioning and let it roll out for a goal kick. So for LSU, pointing the ball at midfield. Under 30 remaining in this second half. LSU on the road in Knoxville. Fourth match that LSU has had against the top 25, yet to pick out a win, that signature win on the season. Great defense from Abby Burdett. Wins the ball at midfield with a little bit of emphasis to it. Thomas takes a touch. Springs forward. No one can seem to really keep too much of possession right now. Washington forward for the midfield. Wins it back for Tennessee. Zaluski trying to pick out Huff. Back at Cook's feet for LSU. Gordon back to Cook again. Here's Huff. Now on the left side, Zalusky and can't possess that at her feet. Throw for LSU. Tennessee trying to set something up. 
Moving towards their offensive third, Jada Thomas fighting for possession with Sage Glover, and it will be a foul on Thomas. Unless you're going long the other way. Here's rain now for Tennessee. Zalusky, a little breath of fresh air here for Tennessee. Bearing down towards goal, looking for Thomas. Bounces out Washington's nearby. Rami Noel, though. I think the Jennings for LSU and a clearance. Tennessee had that good look here early in the half with Jada Thomas right at the front of goal. Moments that she typically capitalizes on. Not much else this half. Thomas giving chase. Wins it at the front of that goal line. Maybe surprised her that she somehow won that ball back. Doesn't have too many options, but just slots it right to Molly Swift. It was Lindsey Jennings who's done so well at just getting in the right position. Try to let it run out for a goal kick, but look at Jay Thomas. Sneakily getting that boot in there. Had Simmons streaking down the other end, but just couldn't make anything of the chance. It's that extra effort, though, that wins Jada Thomas a bulk of her goals. Just that little extra pressure can lead to big things. Good run from LSU. Deflection throw for the Tigers. Now Sean Hudson will go to her bank of substitutions. Kenzie George back on for Tennessee. Megan Johnson on for the Tigers, her first appearance in this match. Another sub for Tennessee, Jordan Fusco back on. Taylor Huff will step aside for a moment. A couple of fresh legs out on the field. About 24 minutes remaining in what is 90 minutes of action here from Knoxville. Important to note again, there is no overtime here in the regular season. You play 90 minutes if you remain in a draw. Once 90's up, it will be a draw. LSU three draws on the year. Tennessee just one. Baker a touch. Drops out nicely for Johnson. Burdett coming forward, though. She has been authoritative in this half. Winning possession for Tennessee. Ball shoots out wide, and it will be a throw for the home team. Having Burdett so important to this defense. SEC tournament MVP last year at Orange Beach. It was oftentimes that unsung hero for Tennessee. She's been making plays this half. Long ball here for the Tigers. On the run is Glover. She beats her defender. Sitters is it through. Out for Baker now who turns and launches. Enticing center ball. By Sage Glover, a couple of Tiger boots were around it. 
Molly Baker with the best look. Uh, just a bit high and wide. Johnson giving chase forward. Baker, a really strong boot. Four goals on the year, four assists. The transfer from North Carolina gave it her best effort. Ball high down towards LSU's attacking third. That's going to be out for a Tennessee goal kick. May have been offside there on Taylor Dobles. Fairly even in this second half. Tennessee was really dominating possession in that first 45. But here at this stage, LSU certainly crafting up a couple of good chances, a couple of good looks. They've gotten shots here in the second half, something they didn't do in the first 45. Burnett wins possession for Tennessee. Nelson. Plays it off for Washington, trying to force it to Fusco. Clarence back out for Nelson for Tennessee. George battling with Noel, really physical battle. And it will be a foul on Noel. Tennessee has won themselves a set piece. It feels like a corner type set piece. Really good positioning for Tennessee. So hard to take a ball away from Mackenzie George. She really fought for this set piece. It's a good battle between George and Rami Noel. A pair of very experienced players. Hannah Zalewski standing at the spot for Tennessee. Two Tigers bunched up in a mini wall. The rest, they wait in the 18. Starting to get to the late moments of this one. Zalewski fires in towards Swift. And she looms over and snags it. Never really a threat from Tennessee to come forward and, and place it in. It was right towards Swift, towards that far post from Zalewski. And the LSU keeper is there. Space. Maria Nelson right side, trying to pitch it off to George. Noel keeps it alive. Might have thought even she went past the touchline. Gives it away. About 18 minutes remaining. As we enter the 73rd minute, late portion. Fusco took a deflection off the boot of Cameron Simmons. Tigers repossessing. Obliz out for Glover at midfield. Glover plays it long. Awkward deflection from Katz, but Tennessee ridding of any potential danger on the long ball from LSU. So hard in these 
tight nil-nil draws late in games. Anything let up at this point just feels like such a crucial blow considering how close it's been, how few opportunities either side have been able to see, especially really in the second half. Tennessee, as mentioned, they've been so good at these late second half goals. Surely something LSU has taken into account. Can they play a strong 90 minutes here? Mackenzie George dumps it off Cameron Simmons. Really good defense from Jennings. She wins possession back for LSU. Trying to feed it off to that right wing. Tennessee will get the throw. But Lindsey Jennings, really stout defense tonight. The anchor of this center back for LSU. Trio of subs for Tennessee. Sydney Hennessy back in. Claudia DiPasupel and Taylor Huff back on. Cameron Simmons coming off. Hannah Zalusky is off. Deeper throw here for Tennessee. Here's Huff. In towards Washington. Swift takes it off one hop. Really good delivery from Huff. Giselle Washington, no goals scored on the year. Got herself in a good position. Fusco at midfield for Tennessee. Huff a nice little back heel. No one home on the other end. Tennessee, they have won nine of their last ten matches, four straight in conference play. Three consecutive shutouts as well. One of the hotter teams in this conference, the team picked to win this conference in the preseason in an effort to defend their SEC tournament championship from a year ago. George wins possession deep within Tennessee's attacking third. It is a foul on LSU. So a set piece chance for Tennessee. Not their typical evening in terms of corner kicks. They've had three of them in this match. Normally sit at about seven and a half, but they have gotten these nice little set pieces that feel like corners. This may be more optimal here for Taylor Huff and Tennessee. From the spot, Huff, central, right to Jennings. She has been so strong defensively. Rain back through Jennings, or that's Cook. Who gets a boot on it for LSU? Both teams have to have that balance of defending strong for a full 90, but knowing, hey, there's only 13 minutes remaining, can we get that breakthrough goal? That final effort push for a game winner while still being disciplined, as both of these defenses have been all night. These two teams, top three in the SEC, two and three in terms of goals per game, and we've got no score. Jada Thomas back in the match for Tennessee. Giselle Washington steps aside for Tennessee. Certainly has been their goal-scoring spark. She has scored in four straight SEC matches. Looking to keep that streak alive here tonight. 
That final push to the end. Free kick here for LSU, Molly Swift. Who has made a couple of crucial saves. Keep things where they are even. Nil-nil apiece. Tennessee has yet to be shut out in SEC play this season. Through 90 minutes. Only been shut out once this season. It was game one of the year on the road at Chapel Hill against North Carolina. Thorson, one touch right back to Fusco for Tennessee. Fusco forward, Taylor Huff now. Fighting with Noel, a lot of speed from Rami Noel. Contact. Foul on LSU, another set piece free kick for Tennessee. Taylor Huff so good with space in front of her. Noel just kind of bumped her on her side there, tried to come forward and win the ball. And Taylor Huff does the right thing. She goes down to set up this chance for Tennessee. Cats and Deepa Supel are there as Tennessee gets organized. It will be Deepa Supel. Locked it into the 18. Jennings gets ahead on it. Swift off of her line. Rennie forward. Hennessy. Burdett wins it. George now with her left foot right to Swift. And she gloves it. Tennessee fought for this shot on frame. Burdett, great win. George did the best she could with her left foot. Awkward angle. Swift in the right position to make that save. You see all the options Tennessee have. That rank of the top ten in shots per game. So many different options that Tennessee could use to score goals. A lot of them have been limited in the second half. LSU now the other way. It's Thorson. Weighing her options. Back out, Gordon. High arced ball. Gordon again now. Thorson. And that try will take a deflection off Claire Rain, and for the first time tonight, LSU has a corner kick. Final 10 minutes of action. Eighty second minute here in Knoxville. No score between these two. Herman's daughter to take. From the corner spot, right out for Glover, but there is a foul on the service. So wipe the shot away. Player down for Tennessee is Taylor Huff. He is able to get up and walk briskly away. SEC Freshman of the Year last year. So impactful for this Tennessee lineup. You see their four goals, six assists. Took a hard collision, it looked like, there in the 18. Yeah, going up for that ball with Sawale. Obviously, head injuries you got to be extremely careful with. Huff will come over to the sideline. She will be subbed out. Giselle Washington in again for Tennessee. Tennessee 
Alicia Garcia back in for LSU. Their fifth year forward, five goals on the year. Just about eight minutes remaining. A fight to the finish. That's going to be a yellow on Rami Noel. Looked like she might have gotten a handball to her and then impeded Tennessee's ability to on that free kick. And that will be a yellow, a third yellow on the night for LSU. Now Tennessee could set up a, another set piece option here. A little bit of distance to it. Deepa Supel and Katz there again. It will be Deepa Supel. Fires it in towards the 18. Cleared away from Noel. A couple of different blue uniforms in position, but LSU, that defense continues to be strong. George now off the throw in. Shakes off two. Hennessy. Air under it. Looking for Thomas, but Swift. Confidently walks forward and makes the catch. Good service in from Hennessy. But Swift making sure nothing comes of it. LSU down the other way. Baker from distance strikes it right over the crossbar. What an effort by Molly Baker. LSU going quickly the other way. And Baker, why not? Showing the range. That had some velocity on it. But it's over the crossbar. Tennessee the other way now. Mackenzie George coming forward. Molly Swift has the slide to it. Back and forth here. Will we see a breakthrough this evening? Again, if we hit... 90 minutes in full. Once six minutes are up and we remain even, there will be no overtime to NCAA rules after 90 minutes. If things are tied, it will end in a tie. Ball bounces out nicely for the Tigers here. Baker, she's got distance. Good touch. Lawson Rennie clears. There's Noel. Fighting with Washington. Hennessy. Got a touch on it. Gordon. Deflected from Jordan Fusco. Quarter number two now for LSU. The Tigers adding on chances. So many more good looks from LSU in this second half than we saw in that first 45. Really good game plan from Sean Hudson in this second half. Again, looking for their first ranked win of the year on the road to Knoxville. Herman's daughter from the spot. Off the head of Washington will do it again. Time is winding down. Sub five minutes in this match, and we are still tied. Roman's daughter again, near post. Romig had to run forward, tipped high and over the crossbar from Sage Glover. Goal kick for Tennessee, and this is where the pace really starts to pick up. You see Romig quickly going to grab the ball. Maria Nelson back in the match, quickly subbing in from Tennessee. No time can be wasted here at this stage. Does Tennessee or LSU have a late game winner in them? Here's Gordon. Turn from Fusco. LSU wins possession back. Garcia moving past midfield. Really good ball to Thorson. Thorson space down the right side. Thorson can't turn it in. 
What a good look for LSU. They can't capitalize. It starts with an exceptional ball from Garcia. Great touch from Thorson. And the look she wanted just couldn't finish it. Three on the clock. McKenzie George now right side. Really good battle with Rami Noel all evening. Noel wins that one. Throw for Tennessee here in their own attacking third. George taking on two. Unless you clear it out. Here's Fusco. Fusco right outside the top of the 18. Nelson with space. Right side, Maria Nelson. Drives it central, cleared back out. Another throw for Tennessee. Two and a half remaining. Cats the throw. In for George. Ricochet at that quarter line. It's going to be a goal kick for LSU. Crucial changing of hands here. Could be one of the last looks that Tennessee sees. They're going to have to win possession back quickly. Swift, not in too much of a rush to get to the ball. Things are even. If they stay even through 90, it will be a draw. Battle at midfield, Washington. Garcia for LSU. Less than 90 seconds remaining. Herman's daughter. Baker. Good move from Baker. Here come the Tigers. Ball played forward. And it's a goal kick for Tennessee. Robig quickly searching for a ball. A minute remaining here in Knoxville. The time to strike is now. For either of these teams, can they put something together here with less than 60 seconds remaining? Tennessee, they've won four straight SEC matches. That win stretch up in the air at this point. Tigers hoping to escape with a point. Deepa Supel. Less than 30 seconds now. Garcia fighting with Rain. Claire Rain wins the ball back. 20 seconds now for Tennessee. Rennie now with 10 on the clock. Lost it ready forward. Here's George. No shot off from Tennessee. 90 minutes expire, and it's a draw here in Knoxville. Hard fought 90 for both of these teams, two teams that are top three in the conference in goals per game, but no goals to show for here tonight. That'll wrap things up here from Knoxville. Again, final line, Tennessee nil, LSU nil. Signing off Andy Brock with the rest of our SEC Network Plus crew here from Knoxville. We say so long, Tennessee and LSU, even at 90.